Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be talking about representation of functions as a power series. So earlier, we talked about the idea of the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence for a particular power series. It turns out that there are certain functions that exist that can be expressed as a power series instead of just the function itself. So for example, it's possible to express the natural log of 1 plus x, for example, as a power series. You might be questioning, well, why the heck would I even want to do that? Well, this is useful because we can use series in order to integrate and differentiate functions that would normally be very difficult, if not impossible, to work with. So certain functions are much easier to work with in power series rather than their normal regular forms. And we'll see an application of this, but not just quite yet. But you'll see later on that it's much easier to work with power series for certain functions than the regular series, the regular function itself. So we need a way to kind of express functions as power series. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do that. One of the most fundamental identities you have to know is the following. So let's start with something called the so let's start with the geometric series, which is something you already know. So recall that the geometric series is given by the following situation. n equals 0 to infinity of a r to the n is equal to a over 1 minus r. And here, the absolute value of r is less than 1. Okay. So here, we're going to do a few changes to this. So let a equal 1 and let r equal x. Then we have the following situation. We have the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. And of course, in this situation, the absolute value of x is less than 1. Okay, so it turns out that almost all the series that we're going to be working with can be manipulated using this kind of formatting in some way, shape, or form, either by algebraic manipulation, by integration, or differentiation, the later of which we'll do in another video. But let's talk about how to kind of manipulate this thing into and represent functions that we want to work with pot potentially. Okay. So notice how writing certain kinds of functions in this form is much easier to integrate than this form. This isn't too bad to integrate, but integrating x to the n is very simple. So it's possible that we may have to do work with a series instead of the function. So we could express our functions as a series, potentially it can potentially be much more easier to work with when it comes to integration and differentiation. But that being said, let's go ahead and do a few examples. So, find a power series representation for g of x equals 1 over 1 plus x cubed. So for example, the reason we wanted to find a power series representation, like for practical purposes, is because something like this would be very difficult to integrate. But if we can express this as a series, it's much easier to work with. Let's see how. Well, we could write this as 1 over 1 plus x cubed. Okay. The goal in any kind of power series question is to make the function you started with somehow look like the original series, the fundamental kind of power series. Okay, so one way we can write this is 1 over 1 plus x cubed is the same as 1 minus minus x cubed. Because that is the same thing. So instead of x, we can just replace all the x's with x cubed and then, or minus x cubed, and then that, that will work out the same way. So this is equal to the summation from n equals 0 to infinity 
of instead of x, we're going to have a minus x cubed to the n. And then similarly, the interval of convergence is going to be x cubed or minus x cubed is less than 1. Okay, so this means that we get the following kind of series. So this time we're going to get the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n, x to the power of 3n. And then in this case, we technically, and uh, let's see, we're going to get the absolute value of negative 1 is just 1. And then if you take the cube to both sides, we're just, we're still going to, we're still going to get x is less than 1. This happens on occasion, but it's usually not the case that the interval of convergence will be the same as the original kind of series, original interval of convergence given by the fundamental kind of power series. That doesn't usually happen, but it can happen on occasion. That being said, though, so recall what we just did. We took the series that we wanted to be started with and made it look like the fundamental kind of series that we knew the power series format of. And then replace all the x's with x cubed minus x cubes, kind of like we did there. And then we went from there. So that's kind of the idea behind how to manipulate a power series. We'll do a lot more examples of this, so don't worry about it too much. Okay. So let's do another one. This will be a lot more complicated when we do integration and differentiation, but that'll be for another video. Okay, so this time, let's do the following. So... Let me just copy paste that thing. Okay, so this time, we want to get the following. And we also want to find the interval of convergence. But you'll see that this part is actually very trivial. Okay, so let's talk about how to find a power series representation of this thing. Well, if I write g of x as x over 5 minus x, well, this is the same thing as x times 1 over 5 minus x. So another way of doing this question is if, we could find a, if I could find a power series representation for this thing, I could just multiply the whole to my x and then I'd be done. So, this, so let's find a power series representation of 1 over 5 minus x instead. Well, okay. So 1 over 5 minus x is the same thing as 1 over 5 times 1 minus x over 5. Which is the same thing as 1 over... 5 times 1 minus 1 over 5 times x. Okay, well, this is now in the form of 1 over 1 minus x, which is kind of what we need. So this is always our goal whenever we do a power series question. So I'm just going to rewrite this a bit more cleanly. So this is the same thing as 1 over 5 times 1 over 1 minus 1 over 5 times x okay so we can we can rewrite we can rewrite this part as a power series summation so we can write this as 1 over 5 times the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x over 5 to the power of n, and of course in this situation, x over 5 is less than 1, which implies directly that the absolute value of x is less than 5. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, we could now go ahead and write this as the following. Recall that, by definition, what do we have before? 
this was 1 over 5 minus x. So let me just go ahead and write down what we have so far. So 1 over 5 minus x is the same thing as this thing right here so far. And we can break this apart a little bit because we'll need to break it apart in just a moment. Okay, but we need to have an x times 5 minus x. We'll recall that earlier, we just kind of split this thing up by multiplying by x. So what we can do is multiply an x in, so we're going to get x over 5 minus x. Of course, if I do it to one side, i got to do the other side. So if I go ahead and do this, I'll get x over 5. times the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n over 5 to the n and the radius of convergence or the interval, interval right there is not going to change so that part is okay okay so let's multiply the x over 5 in so we have x over 5 minus x is equal to the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n plus 1 over 5 to the n plus 1. And same thing, absolute value of x is less than 5. Great. So this right there is our power series representation. This is also the interval of convergence because this thing right here implies that minus 5 is less than x or is less than 5. We don't need to check the endpoints and the reason for that is because we already know that for the geometric series, this is sufficient for convergence of a geometric series. So manipulating this further already takes the endpoints into account. So we don't need to check the endpoints, but it's already done for us. So this is the interval of convergence. So we don't need to do anything right there. Okay, so let's do another one of these examples. Okay, so this time we have x over 5, x over 5 over 9x plus 10. So just like before, we can do the following. So g of x equals x to the 5 divided by 9x plus 10. But then this is equivalent to writing x to the 5 times 1 over 9x plus 10. Okay, so if you can find a power series per power series per presentation for this thing, we're done. Because we can just multiply by x to the 5 and then we're good to go. Okay, so one thing we can do is kind of start with 9x plus 10. Okay, this is the same thing as 1 over 10 plus 9x. I did that just to make this a bit easier to work with. There's no reason to, but it just makes me a little bit more easier to work with. We could, what we can do now is we can factor out a 10 from the bottom. So we're going to get... 1 plus 9 over 10 times x, and then 1 on top, like that. Okay, but then this is the same thing as 1 over 10 times 1 minus, minus 9 over 10 times x, and then a 1 on top. Okay. But then this is the same form as 1 over 1 minus r. So we're good to go. Or 1 over 1 minus x more, uh, more appropriately. So we can go ahead and use our summation formula for the geometric series. So if you go ahead and write this, we get 1 over 10 times the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of minus 9x over 10 to the power of n. But then this implies that 
minus 9x over 10 is less than 1. Okay, so let's keep going with this thing. So we can rewrite this thing as 1 over 10 times the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of minus 9 to the n divided by 10 to the n times x to the n. And then if you pull the nine, minus 9 over 10 out, the minus sign it goes away because of the absolute value. So we're left with 9 over 10 times the absolute value of x less than 1. All right, so what can we do now? Well, the next thing we can do is multiply the x to the 5 in, because the original series had this thing. So we can just multiply by x to the 5 now. So let's go ahead and do that. So x to the 5 times 1 over 9x plus 10 is the same thing as x to the 5 times this thing. Okay, cool. Right there. Okay, so let's keep going. So we have the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 10 times minus 9 over 10 to the power of n times x to the power of n plus 5. And then if you go ahead and simplify this part right here, this implies that x is less than or equal to 10 over 9. And then we can just continue writing the same thing. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Okay, now typically the for a power series, we, we want to start the power series at x to the n, not x to the n plus 5. So what we can do is shift all the indices here by 5 units, or by 5 rather, I, I don't know why I said units. So if we shift the, in, if the, if we shift the indices by 5 up, we have to shift the indices here by 5 down. So if we go ahead and do that, we get 1 over 10 times minus 9 over 10 to the n minus 5 x to the power of, let's see, n. And then here we get x is less than or equal to 10 over 9. Now, of course, this doesn't affect the interval of convergence. So the interval of convergence in this situation is still just 10 over 9 or minus 10 over 9 to 9. So it's going to be from minus 10 over 9 to 10 over 9. I say 9 earlier, but I don't know why I say that. But that right there is going to be our interval of convergence for this particular series. So again, nothing too complicated, but we would be a little bit careful about how we manipulate the series. But if you can do that, we are good to go. Okay, so that, that actually covers it for this video. So if you have any questions about any of the stuff in this video, let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer. But around this, if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll really appreciate it. Thank you all so much, and have a great day.